BestBookBits.com presents The Way of the Seal, Think Like an Elite Warrior to Lead and Succeed by Mark Devine. In The Way of the Seal, ex-Navy Commander Mark Devine reveals exercises, meditations, and focusing techniques to train your mind for mental toughness, emotional resilience, and uncanny intuition. Along the way, you'll reframe your ultimate purpose, define your most important goals, and take concrete steps to make them happen. A practical guide for business people or anyone who wants to be an elite operator in life. Blending the tactics you learn from America's elite forces with lessons from the Spartans, Samurai, Apache Scouts, and other great warrior traditions. Divine has distilled the fundamentals of success into eight powerful principles that will transform you into the leader you always knew you could be. Learn to think like a seal and take charge of your destiny at work, home, and in life. The written and audio summary can be found on our website, bestbookbits.com. So without further ado, I bring the book summary of The Way of the Seal. Lead from the field. Genuine leadership must stem from the heart of the individual, regardless of and sometimes in spite of the organizational role or power systems in which he or she is enshrined. The world needs leaders who will lead from the front and push from the rear, who will stand up and step out, risking more to enforce integrity at all levels, self, team, and organization. We also need organizations to embrace this concept and support the development of individuals and teams by allowing risk and failure in order to foster true learning, the kind that develops the deep character that authentic leadership requires. Principle number one, establish a set point. By defining your stand and purpose, you'll be able to use them as an internal GPS. When the winds of pain and pleasure blow, you won't change course. Make a stand. Leading from the field requires that we first know ourselves, our true nature, inside and out. When we live in a full awareness of our stand, when we can face fear with courage, fear is natural, something to be faced and understood, not to be avoided. Finding the courage to act in the presence of fear is the way of the seal. Your stand should ultimately suggest those character traits you want to embody, even if you aren't 100% there right now. Find your purpose. Your stand will answer the question, what would I do? And your purpose will answer the question, why am I here? Clarify your values so you can become the kind of person who can stand his or her ground every day. Values answer the question, what do I want more of or less in my life? Principle number two, develop front sight focus. In SEAL speak, your goals typically come in two types. You have your big long-term goals to find in your end state, and you have short-term sub-goals to find in your path along the way. SEALs work on one mission at a time, though there may be multiple targets to achieve overall mission success. Whether you face immediate challenges or need a lasting long-term strategy, you can overcome any obstacle and achieve any goal with front-side focus through a four-pronged approach. Number one, prepare your mind. Before you can take control of your mind, you must first calm it down. The fastest way to calm your mind along with your body is through slow and controlled deep breathing. By focusing on your breath, you collapse your focus to the front sight that is the present moment. This settling practice helps reduce mental chatter, prevents your mind from wandering, and is generally a great boost to your self-control efforts. Number two, envision your goal. Front sight focus, especially when backed up by a powerful and clear set point, can propel you toward each target on your way to mission success. But what exactly are you supposed to focus on? The key is to envision your goal whether at the target or mission level, using a type of visualization called mental projection. The purpose of this type of visualization is to plant seeds of a future designed state, such as becoming a CEO of your company, into your subconscious mind and nervous system. As you take action in the real world, the new inner vision will align your heart and mind with your actions and support your efforts to achieve that designed state. Number three, define the mission. When you strive to achieve any goal, read Embark on a Mission. You must clarify and define expectations, both explicit and implicit. Proper planning from the start will help prevent sudden and unfavorable consequences later, which could interfere with your ability to maintain front side focus on missions you've accepted or chosen. And number four, simplify the battlefield. Simplifying the battlefield is a seal speak for eliminating distractions. When we eliminate distractions, we can better see that simple, elegant solutions and remain front side focused on the right way forward. First, you must know your unique offer as an individual, team or business, so you can identify what you must do and what you can delegate to others. Then you must declutter your internal 
and external environment so you can see simple solutions more easily. When your clutter isn't bogging you down, you literally and metaphorically have more room for things you need. Principle number three, bulletproof your mission. There is a reason more than 95% of new businesses ventures fail within five years. Folks don't have the skills to eliminate uncertainty and mitigate risk. To avoid costly mistakes, you must bulletproof your mission, which means doing the following four things. Number one, select high value targets. Choosing the right targets from the outset helps bulletproof your mission because you know exactly where your resources are best directed. The fits, fit, importance, timing, simplicity. Process is designed it to determine which targets best fit the mission you've chosen, which in turn should connect to your purpose as discussed with principle one. Fits ask you to look at each possible target with regard to four criteria. Does this target fit your skills and your team and does it give you a good return on your investment? How important is this target to achieving mission success? Is the timing optimal for pursuing this target? Is the target simple and clear? It takes discipline to focus only on high value targets instead of giving in to the temptation of the low hanging fruit life serves up daily. Number two, explore your options. The right path forward is really crystal clear. Often we have multiple options for satisfying our goals, but they won't rank equally as best for your situation. The key is to scope out your options so you can make the strongest decision for ensuring mission success. Once you've selected your high value targets, you will use the prop process to explore your options for achieving them and zero in on the right path forward. This tool asks to identify your current priorities. What are the realities of the situation? What options do your targets suggest? Which path forward will you select? Number three, communicate the mission. If you can't communicate your mission, you won't get support and worse, you may not recognize disparities between your vision and your stakeholders. You want people, whether they are potential partners, investors, or holders of other support roles, to understand clearly what you want to do, why you're doing it, what resources are required, and who's in charge. The process of framing your mission as a story creates a visual mosaic of the mission plan, which is easy to digest for the team and others who need to be in the know, such as logistical partners and higher up decision makers. Number four, dirt dive your mission. Once you're clearly and visually defined your mission, you need to reconnect with it viscerally. Review it each morning individually and then review it together with your team in your weekly meetings. Ideally, you want to include both mental and physical components when you dirt dive your mission. However, sometimes a physical rehearsal may not make sense or be possible. At minimum, it's always a good idea to dirt dive through a mental rehearsal. When you and your team connect with a mission regularly, when you work out all the kinks and anticipate all the potential problems, your familiarization will enable you to face the real things as if it were just another day. Principle number four, do today what others won't. Find your 20x factor. You guys are capable of at least 20 times what you think you are. Hard work builds character, while a soft life weakens it. Comfort imprisons us in a low-grade fear of suffering. We naturally shy from the things that hurt, not understanding how much this pattern delimitates us and keeps us from experiencing life at its fullest. We must define our comfort zone and then get the heck out of it. The 20x factor is all about embracing a personal culture of mighty effort. Embrace the suck. SEAL trainers often say pain is weakness leaving the body. Pain is weakness leaving the body. This encouraging metaphor describes a fascinating alchemy, the transmutation of training-induced pain into confidence while performing, whether on the battlefield, playing field, or in life. The first step to embracing the suck is to step up and face your fear of suffering. Pain is your body's way of telling you that security is threatened because something is out of whack. However, when you consistently experience the personal growth that accrues from deliberately putting yourself out of balance, such as with hard workouts, you begin to embrace that temporary pain for the rewards it brings. One simple technique for embracing the suck of painful situations is to change your state by immediately focusing on something else that is positive and then smiling or even laughing. Build the three Ds, discipline, drive, and determination. Our habits define us. Solid character habits define a solid character. Start putting your mind to developing the character habits of discipline, drive, and determination. Discipline is the spark that ignites the fire of habit. Those fires must be lit daily, and discipline provides the original source energy. Discipline isn't built or acquired overnight. 
it starts with baby steps. Drive is the motivation behind your actions. How do we build drive? First, connect a major life interest to your purpose and define a mission around it. Determination is the long view commitment to the mission. When everyone else is done for the day, the determined stay for the extra hour honing their skill, working on their gear or studying something new. Principle number five, forge mental toughness. Making excellence a habit will take you a long way down the road towards every mission you focus on and enable you to satisfy your purpose, leading to a happier, more fulfilling and meaningful life. But how exactly do you continue to hang on after others have let go? Control your response. Your immediate and unconscious reaction to survive in such a moment, whether literally or figuratively, is likely to take a deep brewed breath followed by several more. Deep breathing is the universal shutoff switch to stress, but it's also useful proactively to maintain your focus, as we learn with principle number two. Control your attention. Attention control is the sealed version of positive self-talk. At the simplest level, it means to shift our attention from the negative by talking to ourselves positively. It's well known that whatever we focus on it tends to become our reality. Even if we focus on not wanting something, negative input can plant seeds of destruction into our subconscious mind, which then partners with our conscious mind in a conspiracy for failure. The art of positive self-talk is simply paying attention to your inner dialogue and directing it toward positive, performance-based language. Develop emotional resilience. Emotional resilience is instrumental to your ability to forge mental toughness. It's the power to bounce back quickly when circumstances conspire against you. One must speak, visualize, and feel positively in order to be aligned in positivity. Otherwise, the emotional states counteract the positive self-talk and imaginary leading to weak results. The starting point is emotional awareness. Are you emotionally positive or negative? Set effective goals. Each time you set a goal, whether it be big or long term, you ignite a spiral of success that feeds your mental toughness. You're giving yourselves something to strive for, a why, something to visualize and focus on for positive momentum. And each time you achieve your goal, the thrill of success and the surge of confidence you receive expand your sense of self. Enhance your emotional resilience and make it that much easier to tackle the next mission. But you're much more likely to achieve your goals if they are set properly in the first place. Well-stated goals are precise, positive, and written down. They are measurable and have an associated and appropriate time frame. Your goals must be achieved in that you have the potential to accomplish them with the skills and resources available to you. Which leads to the last element of proper goal setting. Your goals must be realistic for you and your life situation. These attributes from the acronym SMART. Specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely or time-bound. Principle number six, break things. Apply total commitment. For elite operators, commitment doesn't mean you already know how you're going to get it done. Find a way or make a way. Find a way or make a way was our motto in the SEALs. It means you will commit and then figure it out. Since no challenge is completely new or unique, to break the mold of current thinking, you want to meld ideas from the past with informed predictions about the future to come up with new solutions for the present. Fail forward fast. Fail forward fast. Moving forward despite chaotic conditions, and sometimes because of them, is inherently risky. And since we don't shy from the risk in the way of the SEAL, you will inevitably experience failure, probably more often than you succeed, actually. The good news is that failure is not as shameful as it once might have been. It's become almost commonplace for an individual to lose his job or to see her business go belly up. In today's fast-paced world, new techniques change industries overnight. With the business, social, and political landscapes shifting like quicksand, failing forward fast is more important now than ever. When you deliberately break something, you must shift your perspective so that you both expect and welcome failure. You will seek it out because that is where the opportunities for personal and professional growth lie hidden. In fact, you're getting it out of the way, knowing that only failure will bring more insights and lessons necessary to remake things better. Failing forward fast allows everyone to learn and gain momentum together in a rapid process. Failure is simply a step in a learning process that looks like this. Number one, try something new. Number two, fail. Number three, analyze. A, the lessons we learned, and B, how we can modify or approach to gain momentum and prevent the failure again. Number four, 
implement changes for the next iteration. And number five, incorporate these insights personally and at the team level to shift your thinking for another go around and perhaps adjust the system or process itself to reflect the new knowledge. Number six, try it again and repeat steps two through five until you succeeded in your mission. Navigate gaps for opportunity. Life will bring you plenty of opportunity in the form of failure and as you embrace the concept of failing forward fast with intention, you will accelerate toward opportunities for learning and growth. But as a WOS leader, you can and should always proactively seek out opportunities for breaking things so you can remake them better. The speed of technological advancement has accelerated change in all areas of commerce, government, and our personal lives. As these new realities depart from the old boundary lines, gaps open, and in these gaps arise numerous opportunities. During transition periods such as we are currently experiencing, there will be more chaos, more reality gaps, and more opportunities. These opportunities are yours to grab. Innovate and adopt quickly. After risk aversion and fear of failure, indecision is perhaps the most common reason that innovation killing stands still we call inertia. The thing is, any plan is better than no plan. Any plan is better than no plan. And a good plan executed now is far better than a perfect plan executed too late. You need to get comfortable with a good enough plan and develop conviction in the belief that your decisions will improve as you fail forward fast and tap into your resources. You can't allow a fear of failure to keep you from ever starting. Let your intuition guide you. Your perspective will shift as you act, which is a good thing, and you'll tighten things up as you go. So after taking a moment to assess the situation, make a decision, use the tools and take action as soon as possible. Principle number seven, build your intuition. Most of your creativity and some of your best ideas will come from the hidden inner mind of your subconscious. Once you learn to harness this powerful intelligence, you will break through to new levels of awareness and accomplishments. Expand your awareness. Awareness is the ability to pay close attention to the whole and parts of the situation simultaneously. We want to be able to take it all in while also maintaining an attention to detail. Intuition development requires us to expand our range of awareness and tap into the subconscious minds at will. The art of using your intuition is to learn by absorbing more information and then accessing it into a sensible form. This skill can help us make better decisions and avoid danger or problems, especially on the fly or in a chaotic situations. Your awareness does expand naturally as you age, travel and take in more experiences. However, you can still be closed to the deeper wisdom within you if you remain in your head at all times. Expand your awareness deliberately by getting out of your head and deepening your connection to your senses and your subconscious genius. Strengthen your sensory perception. Slowing down and engaging the senses fosters a sense of mindfulness. Mindfulness is a practice that leads to a deeper connection with your inner self, a more present state of awareness through which your wisdom can flow. To facilitate this, you want to develop your sensory perception, which means that you take in more information through each of your senses. Develop your sensory perception by turning into and turning on your senses. Uncover your background of obviousness. Life experiences, especially those from early childhood, can remain with us a long time. We store what we need to actively remember in order to survive and thrive in our memory centers. The bulk of the details are imprinted at a deep subconscious level. They often solidify into negative or destructive beliefs, which then drive our behavior in subtle ways for the years after the experience itself. Your background of obviousness, B-O-O, -O, that's because they are hidden in plain sight, obvious to others, but not to you. If you want to succeed at the highest levels, you must align the inner with the outer. This theme repeats itself in the book because it's a base requirement for many of the techniques to work at maximum effectiveness. Often this means you will have to reconnect with or relive your hidden experiences. Recap your past and tune in with how you develop the beliefs and behaviors you have now, many of which may be holding you back or interfering with your ability to make good decisions. Open up your inner wisdom. The next stage of the process is to open up a channel for your subconscious mind to communicate with you more clearly, providing more detailed information than a simple feeling in your gut, and a tool for clearing out any baggage that clouds your present decision making. Principle number eight, think offense all the time. Whether at home, at work, or even out having fun, 
how you think and deal with opportunities and threats will determine whether you are the victor or victim. Destiny can strike anytime, anywhere. For success in the way of the seal, you must develop your winning attitude and become a more offense-orientated leader. Developing unwavering confidence. Make an honest assessment of the language that you use on a daily basis. Do you use negative or slow down words? Practice using new language daily and journal your findings every week. Keep at this until it becomes a new habit and second nature. Activate your radar. Like a seal, you must learn to act aggressively and rapidly when you become aware of the threats facing you. You must also take advantage of opportunities by innovating and adapting, doing the unexpected to keep your competition off balance. Do the unexpected. Doing the unexpected fundamentally asks you to look at things from a different angle than everyone else. When you train yourself to see what others don't see, then you can unlock your innate creativity. People generally expect that others will follow the rules, which may literally be rules, as in a competition, or may be somewhat more abstract, as in cultural norms. So it naturally follows that doing the unexpected often means breaking the rules. Execute with velocity and agility. Execute with velocity and agility. In business, speed or velocity keeps you ahead of the competition and keeps them off balance, surprising them at every turn. Apple gets kudos for their creativity, but Samsung gets the award for speed. They stun the iPad creator with how quickly they produced a competing tablet. You are well aware that the pace of change is accelerating as technology pushes the reaches of globalization. Remain static and you lose momentum, visibility and opportunities. Eventually you become stuck in a cryogenic deep freeze as the world blazes by. Like the SEALs, WOS leaders set the conditions for rapid execution by trusting those in the field, applying standard operating procedures, and utilizing a shoot, move, and communicate process. And that's a wrap on the Way of the Seal summary. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out previous 400 video book summaries to watch at your pleasure. Check out our website, bestbookbits.com, where you can download the written PDF version to read offline in video categories such as biographies, business and marketing, habits, health, leadership, money, personal development, philosophy, psychology, real estate, relationship, sales, spirituality, success, and time management. If you're into the audio podcast version, check out Book Bits for over 400 audio book summaries to listen to at your pleasure. Check out our Instagram page, bestbookbits.com, and follow us for daily motivational posts and book summaries. Hope you got something out of this summary. Thanks for watching and listening. Have yourself an amazing day. Go out there and become the way of the seal. Take care.